There he is, Nick Taylor. There's our friend Johnson Wagner, who has been wearing out his sneakers this week. Johnson, good to see you. And there you are with the Canadian star and winner on the PGA Tour this season. Yeah, Todd, it's good to hear from you. I got four-time PGA Tour winner Nick Taylor here. We are on the second hole. Nick, uh, can you walk us through this par-5 tee shot? I find it to be one of the most demanding on this golf course. Yeah, it's, it doesn't really fit my eye. I typically like to go a little left or right off the tee, so my best strategy, I kind of aim straight, try to hit a straight ball. If it falls a little right, hopefully I'll catch the right side of the fairway there, but um, it's one you just try to keep between the trees and, and hopefully hit the fairway and you have a chance to hit the green, too. Let's see what you got. All right. Ooh, yeah, must be a good luck charm. There we go. <laughs> nice fade there. <laughs> All right, Nick, this is your this is your seventh uh, player's appearance. I know it's your eighth, but we're not going to count 2020. Um, seventh player's experience. You, I think your best finish was a T16 back in 2019. Mm -hmm. What is it about this golf course that that you like or that is challenging to you? So I've. You know, I think there's a bunch of birdies out here when the when the conditions are right, but there's also a lot of others I think in play. You know, I've I think a lot of my tournaments I've had great rounds, but have have had some some not so great rounds. So I've I've kind of been all over the map. So if I can limit the mistakes, I think that's the biggest thing out here. P. Dye does such a great job of, of visually intimidating, but once you play it enough, you really do realize where the scoring holes are, where the shots you need to be more conservative on, and there is a lot of birdie opportunities. So you just got to try to take advantage of those holes. I'd like to reflect a little bit on last year. Uh, go back to 2023 WM Phoenix Open. Uh, at that point, it was called a designated event. You were in the final group with Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm, yeah. I think then number one and two in the world. Mm -hmm. And you were the only one in that field that pushed Scotty to that point. What did that week do for you, confidence-wise? It was huge. You know, it was it was uh, you know not only with world ranking points and that to get up into a position where I could play at a bunch more bigger events, but confidence wise playing with those two guys, um, you know, feeling like my game matched them going head to head, you know, it was disappointing that I wasn't able to win, but I felt like I got beat. You know, I pretty much had to probably play a perfect round that day to, to match Scotty. Um, so I took a lot of confidence from that. And, you know, from there that definitely helped me in the, in the future tournaments of being in positions where I was trying to win a golf tournament, knowing that, I did everything I could. It just didn't fall my way that day, but um, felt like I performed well under the pressure. And, and as a player, I, I know the answer to this, but like people look at that moment, it's like that's where Nick Taylor turned his career around. You mm -hmm. were already a two-time winner at that point. Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of buildup in the months leading into the WM Phoenix Open in 23 that kind of put you in that position? You know, the, the previous fall, you know, I I was exempt to the next year, but I finished like maybe 120th in the FedEx Cup, so I, I had a disappointing season. And that off season is when I kind of looked at things, made a few tweaks, added a few more people to my team, and, and you know Dave Markle was caddying for me now. He essentially started that new season in the fall, and he's been phenomenal with a lot of the attitude stuff for me on the course, more positivity, you know. And he's a great friend of mine. We've been friends for 15 years, and um, so there's a, a few changes in there. Really, commitment to drills that make me better after no doing a few things, and just sticking to the basics. A lot of process stuff that. Uh, for a while, I think I bounced around and, you know, work on one thing one day, the next week it didn't feel quite right, I'd do something different where I just, I've been really diligent the last year and a half of sticking to what I know works best for me and, um, you know, it, it's easy to stick to it when the results are coming as well, but it, w it was probably the September of the fall before where we really saw things come when I had some good finishes in that fall. Um, you know, and then the, really the huge confidence boost was the WM Phoenix, Phoenix Open. Yeah, and as a player, as you described, like you're constantly searching for something that's hard for it to stick yeah. and have like staying power. All right, I got to go to the Canadian Open. <laughs> I was working the Golf Central desk that week, and uh, like uh, I'm gonna get chills thinking about it right now. Not many people realize you shot 75 that opening round. You were in 120th place, so to yeah. even make the cut was a historic thing. And then the way you finished Sunday. You did the walk and talk with CBS, made bogey on that hole when you put the earpiece in. I was yeah. like, please don't do it, please don't do it. You did it. It was incredible with the birdies on 17, 18, the whole playoff, like the vibe about around that place, like having such a pro Nick Taylor crowd cheering for you, I, it's like every professional golfer's dream. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I've, you know, I hope to experience it again, but at that point, had never experienced anything like it. You know, it wasn't, they weren't booing Tommy necessarily, but they were cheering when he hit, when he missed those putts, especially in the playoff. And, to be able to come back after that first day, you know, just making the cut was obviously a good feat, but I really fed on that momentum. I played really well Friday, but 
I just finished the round off Saturday. And so starting that day, I wasn't necessarily thinking, let's get into contention today, but really just keep going what I had been doing Friday. And um, to be able to make the putts, get the momentum going, and then shoot that great round Saturday just to have a chance Sunday. And then uh, everything kind of fell, fell together that last day. Let's go to your ball or Adams over there. Yeah. So going forward, President's Cups, obviously in Canada at Royal Montreal. Do you think like you're playing with Adam Hadwin and Corey Connors? I know Mackenzie Hughes has mm -hmm. a shot at that team. Missing out at Quail was a big deal. Taylor Pendrith was on that team at Quail. If we can get three, four, five Canadians on that team, is the vibe at Royal Montreal potentially going to be like what we saw at the Canadian Open I think, last year? I think absolutely. I think that's, that's what we're striving to be. I think we're going to have that real home field advantage. Um, you know, with Weirzy being captain, we'll just add to that as well. So we're all working as hard as we can to be on the team. I know it's important. All right, what do we have here? We got the Smith of Help off the left, 213 front edge, 233 pin. So, Nick, this, this tee shot requires a draw. And now what I love now, about it, you have to hit your fade exactly. in the second, which is kind of a, a something Sawgrass does better than any other golf Absolutely. Course. you got to be able to kind of shape it both ways, at least feel comfortable with the start line. So this is about my hybrid. It's about a three iron club, but probably high 220s, 230-ish. So it's a good club uh, for this shot. Starting line? Starting line's pretty much in the middle of the green there. What I think Pete does, it does such a great job in the par fives especially is, you know, this is a practice round pin, is in the middle, but there's always a spot to miss to give you the best opportunity to make birdie and spots where you miss and you're just trying to make par because you're in jail. So. Um, you know, this is easier because it's the middle of the pin, but if the pin's on the right, we really got to keep it left and vice versa. So it's, uh, he's very clever in that way. Oh, <laughs> be a two. You guys can stick around all Be you want. Too. Uh, Nick, I can't thank you enough for your time, man. Have a great week here at the Players really Championship. It. You're the best. And thank you. Like I said, I can't remember uh, rooting so hard for somebody to win a golf tournament. Even when I was a kid watching Tiger and Phil and all those guys, I was rooting so hard for you. Thank you. I, I just, uh, I, like, I know how much it means to you. Yeah, I just I appreciate it's awesome. it. Thank you. Todd, back to you guys at the desk.